We'd like to sincerely thank our Patreon supporters. Hey, good morning, everybody. I am out on the dock about to feed the fish. And today, we're going to start a new video. Um, as you guys have seen in all the last couple videos, I'm pitching food out to the fish while we're talking, um, which are just going crazy. And there's that large turtle in the middle of them. Let's see, when he comes up, he'll... I don't know if you guys can see him or not. It's a big slider. I think he eats all the, fit, the food that the ones, the fish already bring down, because he's just tearing around underwater. It's pretty funny to watch. But uh, it's been raining every video. Every, every video. And... Uh, Everything in my shop is getting wet and I haven't moved everything from the other shop in Jupiter over, but I need to start moving more stuff over. Every time I take the trip between the two houses, I should be bringing more stuff over here. Now, we've been doing that uh, getting ready for winter video and doing all these uh, hide boxes and we're working off this table in the middle of this shop and my drill bits on this counter had water in them. These buckets with screws had water in them. That the rain is driving so hard that it's hitting stuff in the middle of this shop. So, you know, I keep putting it off and I'm working on other projects, but hey, what, what am I gonna do when it rains? I could come over here and knock out a form. So why not start this video and just keep it going. And on my downtime from other stuff, I need to work on this. So I need to do a small concrete footer between each one of these posts. All right, let me, let me correct myself. I don't need to do that, but it will last longer if I do that. So if I build a form on either side of this, I think I may actually make it a little smaller. So instead of putting my pressure treated two by six onto this slab, it's elevated five and a half inches up. It will stop water from wicking into my wall and creating a wood rotting uh, situation. Now, obviously this post is sitting on the ground and it wicks water up. You can actually see it wicking water up. Um, there's not too much I can do about that. I could use a very aggressive and a very good caulk when I finish everything up to try and stop that, but that may actually stop it from drying out. Um, these posts are made to last for a very long time, but the walls that I'll build in between them are going to add strength to all of this and tie all of this together. When I plywood this wall, I will have, to, I can remove all those angular pieces because they're no longer gonna be needed what it does for the structure, stopping it from moving this way and that way, a sheet of plywood does the same exact thing. Uh, actually better. If you built a, a two by 12 header, you know, and maybe it's uh, two two by 12s thick, um, that's pretty strong. But if you sandwich a piece of plywood, you rip some 12 inch plywood in the middle of that, and you screw the two together, it is way less likely to, to sag ever. Because plywood is just, it's all laminated, thin pieces of uh, um, sheets of wood. And uh, it, it works like uh, carbon fiber or fiberglass or something like that, that weave glued together does not flex that way. Obviously, plywood can flex this way but that's not where it has its strength. Obviously, can't flex between there and there. The middle does not move. Um, so I'm gonna get started setting up one of those forms and show you how I'm gonna do it. And while I'm pouring concrete for other stuff, we can always, each day, pour a section over here. Get these walls dried in. I could get this wall to here. I have some decisions to make after that, how it's gonna jog into that wall. And again, we want to um, extend that, this middle area 
out all the way to here. That's basically even with the shop because I want a larger woodworking area. So all of this will be a slab and covered. Um, that way in my shop, I'm not sanding wood and I'm not sanding fiberglass. Anything messy will be done in that area. And in this area, we'll be working on vehicles, trucks, boats, doing oil changes on my truck, everything that is, I wanna say clean. It's not clean, but it's not dusty. That way my supplies, materials, all that good stuff stays clean. Um, I'll be working on cages and stuff today too, um, but that's what this video is about, starting the shop. Okay, I've moved what I need out of the way and I've measured the distance between right here and right here and these cells are the longest four so the two on this side the two on that side this side this section is smaller i think you guys can clearly see that that one is probably about a foot shorter maybe about seven feet where those are about eight footish um although this one will have i'll have to peel back some of this before i tie the concrete into that um but I think we have like 95 and a half, 96 and an eighth. Um, ninety five and three quarters. And I believe this one is ninety six and a quarter. So it's the longest one. Now since I'm putting one two by six to the outside and the other one, instead of wasting the concrete i could do it the full width and then waste i think this is uh by 10 so it's nine and a half inches of concrete or i could set the two by six on the inside and really only do the thickness that i need for my wall why not save the concrete with as much concrete as i'm using up over here um why don't i just save that um so i'm going to start with the longest section first i need to move all this spare um roofing metal roofing material that we could uh, probably use on the chicken coops and stuff like that um just i just need to lay that out of the way it'll kill the grass a little bit but maybe uh i think that'll be the third section so in three days i'll be able to lean it back up maybe i'll lean it on the inside where it's out of the way more um and uh get started on that form all right so this is what i was talking about the outside two by six, very simple. Just gets screwed to these posts. I used the straightest one for this. I will screw it to those posts and then either use angle brackets or a block to stop it from expanding out. When we pour the concrete, it's going to want to expand out. Now this one had a little bow in it. So once we attach this one to the concrete, I'll use a clamp and pull this one in a little bit to where it's straight and then block it as well. Now, it's not going to want to expand in. It's only going to want to expand out as you put the concrete in it. Um, and then this will get screwed onto this board and then this one into the piling. Now, from the inside, I want it all tied together. So what I'm going to do is put some screws, maybe at an angle into that coming out and some screws into there, like large four inch screws. So the concrete grabs onto that post on both sides. And then I will use some Tapcons that I've removed from another project and then stagger them into this slab, which will tie this little wall onto the slab. Now, the correct way to do it will be to drill a hole, or put rebar in, rebar should go through these posts be epoxied into this post rebar hammered down and epoxied into this slab that's the correct way i know the correct way but this is good enough this will this will be fine just because it's not written in code or whatever it's not doesn't mean it's not plenty strong enough if i put enough anchors that concrete will all act as one it's going to be way stronger than this already hurricane rated structure. That's that's the truth of it all. It may have more windage from this side, 
but it has way more points of attachment to the slab. Everything will be tied together. The fact that there's plywood instead of just those boards make the whole structure more rigid. This, this will be a thousand times more strong than when I started. Don't worry about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start getting this fastened and then show you what it looks like when I'm done. All right, so I have the form done. The piece that's cut to fit in between these posts, screwed into the post, that little scab screwed into it. These little stops that stop it from expanding. The four inch screws screwed into the post and the tap cons. I actually put too close together there because of this crack that runs through the shop. I don't want that crack to transform into this by stitching it there that should help. So I did one basically every 16 inches staggered um, and the block stopping it to expand over here. Now normally I would put something up top to stop it from expanding, but since it's only a two by six, it's not going to expand up top. There's not, there's not enough pressure on it to do that. Um, anything taller, I probably would. Even just two one by twos there or something like that would stop it from blowing out a little bit at the top so that, that's basically ready to pour before i pour this concrete i'm gonna go look and see if i can't do another form over by my cages so while i'm on concrete i can pour multiple things but that's for another video all right here we go that's poured so i used that little short piece of two by four to tamp it down and and get it to move around and level itself out it, it really doesn't matter once all this is done we will tap con down a two by six pressure treated on top of that and then we'll be able to use white pine uh two by sixes starting if a sheet of plywood started here we'll do them 16 inches on center and lay our plywood sideways where we can just set all this up and then we will start our rolls of tar paper overlapping over this corner the tar paper this whole wall overlapping so it's dry the rain will constantly just sheet off of it and it's going to to ride that way just for a little bit Later on, we'll do some Tyvek sheets for some sort of insulative property, and we'll do a hardy board siding over this to finish, similar to what I had at the other shop. Um, and the plywood will overlap this just slightly, probably by an inch and a half to two inches. So really, it's not that high off the slab, but it's better than it sitting on it and wicking up all that water. Um, should be good and it's nice that this slab was poured so far out that uh um the ground for the termites to come in are so far away although areas like this this is a relief cut on the slab do allow termites to tunnel in and work their way into wood this should have a lot of pressure treating chemical in it which would deter them but nothing's a guarantee so i'm gonna break for lunch and I believe I have to uh, start working on the cages again. <laughs> All right, I've pulled the form boards from the first stem wall section. So you guys see what I'm talking about. Now we can build our wall on top of this, tie it into that. If, if a two by six ends up being there, we'll just use a big paddle bit and, and recess that so it covers that up. But it may not end up on that because again we're going to do our two two by sixes starting from the front 16 on center so the first stud could be like right here um you'll see when i start hanging the plywood why why i do it that way um and we could probably get away with the two by four wall but i'm not trying to get away with anything i want it to be strong so um we'll build it a little stronger um this is the next longest wall section it would be nice if it was all on the same side and we can complete one side but that one was 96 and a quarter this one's 96 and an eighth i think that one's 95 and five eighths and i think one on the other side's three quarters so um we just got to work our way from longest to shortest 
I'm gonna get this one formed up and poured this morning and get back to work on the cages. And we've got this one poured as well. Tomorrow, I think we start on the front one on the other side. All right, guys, I just poured the fourth eight foot section. So now we have four of those done. Uh, this one overflowed a little bit. Once the main section of that form sets off a little bit, I'll just get a hose and a scrub brush and get this off the paver walkway. Um, it'll come up quite easily. But the other three sections are good and dry. So I bought the pressure treated two by sixes to go on top of that. So what I'm gonna do is measure out the first one for a front section and which would be this section and working from the front edge of the shop I'm gonna measure 16 inches on center and lay that pressure treated there and just do some rough markings and the reason why I'm gonna do the rough markings before I actually tack on it down is I don't want tap cons to be in the way of where I toenail this two by six that's running upright. I don't want my tap cons to be in the way. And if I move them over an inch this way or that way, it's gonna be only uh, less problematic. So I'll lay them there, do my measurements, and then tap con it down. And then I'll do the same for this one. Um, now, after that form is dry on the other side, then we have these smaller sections that I think are about seven feet. I have those two to do on both sides. And I decided to go straight across where I'm gonna put a door. I'll put a hurricane impact solid steel door. I don't think it needs a window or anything, but I'm gonna put a solid steel door right here in this area. So when you come down this walkway, you'll head straight into a door to enter my shop. But before, I was either gonna lower that stem wall or whatever for the door, but why not? It's this five and a half inch step. I'm gonna leave it. So I'm gonna go straight across, and then I'm gonna purchase the door, and I'll change that when I frame up this section. This section may get framed up a little later. Again, we're gonna be tight on funds trying to get this done at the same time as the cages. Um, and then I'll figure out some of those other small areas. But I'm gonna start that pressure treated, uh, um, the baseboards, baseboards, the, the pressure treated boards on top of that stem wall. And then uh, we'll go from there. <laughs> okay, we had the first board tap con down. And so there are the tap con screws. Um, for those of you who don't know, a tap con is a concrete screw. You have to use a hammer drill to create a pilot hole. And this screw is a 3 16 by three and three quarter inch tap con. And I have them two on each end and then every 12 inches on the board. Um, this structure was already approved for hurricanes as it was. I am only making it stronger tying it together better. I mean, those, again, I think I mentioned this before, but those, uh, if those are two by eights or two by tens, angular creating support, plywood is going to be stronger. It is stronger than that. And it's placing that strength. It's spreading it out. Now it's gonna have more windage, but it's also not gonna allow the wind to get inside and create lift once this is closed. So we're only trying to improve this structure um, and make it more usable for us. So showing you how I did this, a sheet of plywood is eight foot long and I need something to screw the end of the sheet of plywood in. So if you divide it, the tape measures make it very easy. 16 inches on center is marked on your tape measure. So 15 and a quarter, 31 and a quarter. You go all the way down. I put an X for where, uh, that doesn't show well with my shadow, does it? So all the way down, 
and then we're getting to the next board. If I can get my tape measure to cooperate. So from the last one, from that board, and I'll do it without the camera in my hand, the next board, so that first sheet of plywood is gonna stop on that post. And the next one is gonna start on that post at that 16. So I will start doing my marks from that line and, and continue on. Um, and I'll show you it all marked up. All right, guys, uh, we got that other eight foot section over there poured. Now we have this section poured. In this section, I need to find out what size hurricane impact door that I want to be straight down this path leading into the shop. So we'll do a couple measurements, figure out the doorway opening, and uh, the we'll have to create and frame out a door opening and then hang, you know, frame around it and then hang our plywood around it so we can install a door here. So the first little tricky spot is going to be tying this in. I can either peel back the hardy board or not really worry about it and pour my concrete to it. Technically, this gives you the same insurance rating as a concrete house. You could have a wood frame with cement siding and your house will be insured the same as a CBS structure in Florida. Um, but this is just a shop, so I may actually pour right to the cement siding and then when we trim it all out, I, th I think it'll all look seamless and it it'll be fine for my shop. I'm not gonna tell anyone if you don't. Um, obviously, if it was a customer's house or something like that, uh, you would peel it back and do it correctly, but um, it's fine. So I need to get some of this garbage out of the way. Some of this stuff is supposed to go into the chicken coop later, some of the starter cages for the chickens, and these hide boxes can go somewhere else because the trickier area is doing the stem wall for this. You know, we're gonna follow this exterior wall. So our finished wall has to match up with that. So we're gonna have to peel out off that trim, find out exactly where that wall is. I think it's gonna be a two by four wall. So we're gonna have to do, instead of a two by six wall, this will be a two by four wall. But again, we are going to extend, or the sun's gonna grab us, this roof. It'll change pitch slightly, because I would like it to be eight foot, even with this slab, so we can pull the tractor and golf cart and stuff like that under this roof, and have a room that is specifically for sanding wood, doing woodwork and all that, and my shop stays clean. So we'll frame out that wall, but it'll be a shared wall with this area. So we'll do that wall, and it has to go up slightly there, and then jog and return with this wall and this post. So that stem wall has a little jog to do. Um, I wish I had my plumb bob, it's at the other house, but it's still easily done with a large level and a very straight piece of material or some aluminum, like square aluminum tubing or something like that. And, uh, and we can still get a straight edge on the floor and mark it all out. Um, I think I already showed you, we marked the front of the shop. So I'll peel back these forms, get these other ones done, get that concrete poured. And I also have our first, I was supposed to get 20. I think I ended up with 19. We had the first 19 two by sixes to start doing these uprights. So we can start framing out these walls um, to properly frame them. I have to well, I don't think I have to remove those supports yet until I start doing the plywood, but I do have to remove this um, air hose reel. It's in the way of where that's going to be. Um, I, I'm not partial to the reels, and actually, you know, with all the battery tools, impact tools and everything, I don't use air for anything really other than tires now. Um, so I'm okay with a looped 
uh, air line on this return wall. So there will be a return wall, what did we say, to right here? So we're already starting to lose our pencil marks. Um, but we'll have that little return wall. So it can be right here on this return wall um, later. Um, also, uh, doing the demo work, which I was going to film, but then I decided just just finish the demo work at Jupiter, and I was plugging away working on it. And uh, you know, to get the the well, this is a six by six, but the four by fours that go into the ground and the concrete is poured around them on those enclosures, and then I have the wall. I have to kind of knock out a section of the wall to start working this four by four loose. Well, again, four by four at the other property to like wiggle it and work it loose and lift it straight up out of the ground. Um, well, one of those wall sections that was just like three foot wide, um, I broke it free pretty loose, little chips and stuff on the ends, but I broke it pretty loose. So I moved it out real strong and then started rolling it to the side because my buddy's bobcat he can take it whole or broken up or whatever and uh i had twisted my knee a little bit like a week ago and i didn't it started leaning towards me and i didn't want to put a lot of pressure into it and hurt my knee and i kind of let it go and uh oh man it it took all the skin off my leg uh my ankle is purple uh I thought at first my big toe was broken because it ended up folding and rolling over on my toe. Uh, it's just sprained, so I mean it hurts to put shoes on. I couldn't even put my work boots on today because uh, they sit a little higher than the sneakers and they're rubbing on onto that raw flesh. Um, I'll have Tom include the, the picture of what it looked like when it happened. It was pretty gnarly. So I'm going to do what I can. Um, I was working on that plumbing video, but I think I'm going to pull these forms off and do this stuff in the shade and maybe rotate the tires on my truck and give my truck a wash and then maybe rest my leg because even standing on it, um, you can feel the pressure and it's going to start to swell. So, because um, as much as it's cut, it's, uh, it's like internally bruised in there. Um, so I'm going to get started. All right, guys, we have the uh, the longer form set up and sitting on the ground. Now I still have to set the Tapcon these blocks in that stop the form from expanding when I pour it. And I still have to put those long staggered Tapcons into the existing slab to stitch this into it as well as the four inch screws into the wood that will tie it into the wood in fact i should unscrew this and put two screws into the wood here two into the wood here and it's just gonna tie it all together better and again the proper way to do this is to drill an epoxy rebar in it and these these stem wall uh, sections should all have metal in it and stuff I don't care not from for what I'm doing I, I I'm not worried about that and it's gonna be plenty strong and if somebody comments and says it's not I did it at the other house eight years ago and I don't have a crack in it anywhere it's it's fine um, the proof is in the pudding <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's so easy to say you're going to have problems because code is is set a certain way. Um, if this was a brand new shop here at this house and this slab hadn't settled yet, oh, you know what? I'm going to stop right now and show you this. This is a a velvet ant. They're on this property. It's also called the a cow killer. Um, pretty nasty name for it. Um, that's actually a pretty small one. Um, it's bites not gonna kill you. That's funny, we got a lot of things that can sting and hurt you out here. Um, it's like a, a wasp sting. So, and technically it is a wasp. It's like a ground wasp with no wings. Um, and I always see them just soldiering about by themselves, randomly, like one a day. There's no significant nest or anything like that that I ever see where there's a whole bunch of them. It's just random single um, ants. 
just crawling around but pretty cool never saw them at the other property uh, and when you see a real big one lit up very orange it's a uh, pretty cool looking insect um so yeah i'll uh i'll get all this stuff done and then i still have that small section to form up uh i'm not pouring concrete today um this is uh my leg is 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 swelling around my sock and it's aching and uh, i don't want to pour the concrete and get concrete dust in it i had it covered up yesterday i don't know if i said this in the earlier video but it uh it kind of mended itself to the bandage and it was horrible to take the bandage off last night so i'd rather it scab over and heal i think i'm going to try and put it in salt water tomorrow um so I'm just gonna get these forms ready and probably go inside and get off my feet. And uh, there's always paperwork and some background stuff to do, like figure out my taxes for the year for like reptile sales, start adding up receipts and organizing all that good stuff. Um, so I'm gonna get this done and uh, I'll show you guys after we have these poured. I mean, really the next day we're gonna start framing this wall i need to get a long ladder in here from the other house and uh we could start closing this in the sooner we get this closed in and the plywood and tar paper on it the sooner i can get some more of the shelving from the other house and my toolboxes over here uh i can't tell you how many times i started a project and needed something and it's at the other house so even though the animals are moved all the tools aren't moved all right guys um i'll show you the next step all right guys I am uh, still nursing this leg, uh, trying to keep it away from the, uh, I know it looks horrible, it's, uh, it's actually the sweat building up underneath the uh, antibiotic ointment. It's, it turns uh, whitish yellow, it looks, it looks horrible. Um, but uh, I'm staying away from working on the cages and keeping the dirt out of it. Um, I think I showed you guys how I formed and poured this wall. I hope I showed that to you. If not, there it is again. And I did the short wall on the other side. So that's how that will jog over and then follow this wall to close off the back of the shop. But jog out and then follow that where I took the hardy board off and showed where they have a flashing issue. You could see that water damage and you can see maybe the staining there that flashing term terminates there and isn't caulked or anything and basically is shooting the water behind that hardy board and starting to rot this wood but when we add this other roof system we'll go underneath and behind that flashing and continue it out along this wall and past the wall so it shoots the water out and then we'll be able to finish this wall and then do this roof section and slab and stuff in here later but right now we just need the walls here so i have finished the first eight foot wall section and put these pieces in here to make it sturdy as can be you can see where i was describing how i would notch it up top so that wall is installed in there and hopefully that light doesn't mess it up you guys can see it's a nice straight wall and we still have to remove these supports as we're starting to hang the plywood so i think we can get two sheets high before we do that now the plywood will act as an even better angular support than those if you want to call them gussets it's basically what they are um, we'll be able to remove those at that time so i got as far as that i'm about to start this wall section here um, this one's not even tap con down yet. Um, but I don't know if I don't need to steal that board to use as a form board. So maybe I don't tap con that down. And we had already figured out the wall sections for our garage door openings, but I did it in pencil. And you can only vaguely see where an X was, but not even the line. So I think I'm gonna go back pop a chalk line for a straight edge and actually get the forms on for these three sections that go across the top and uh and maybe start some concrete work and get these last three sections poured because the uh the ladder is actually making my leg ache um so 
I think I may stop and do that concrete work. But uh, the goal is to get these, at least these two corners, so I can get a toolbox tucked in that corner and be dry. I can build the shelving along this wall to have more storage. And uh, I mean, shooting this other video at the same time, uh, so you guys know the, where we are in the videos, the Jeep is still sitting on the trailer. So that Jeep is waiting to go also into that first bay once we get it done so uh you know like everything over here every small step affects another step and i'm usually shooting six different videos at the same time so uh it's confusing for tom because he has to go through all the footage and sort it all out um all right i'm gonna set those forms and i'll show you them when they're done okay i have the forms done for my returns my screws all tapped on in there to kind of grab that little miniature stem wall slab. It'll be uh, from, there's nothing being poured here on. That's the end right there. So this 12 foot, three inches after trimmed out will be the 12 foot opening for a door, 12 foot tall. Here's my middle section. I put more screws and heavier tap cons in there. And then another 12 foot opening to my other return. I'm sorry, 12 foot, three inch opening. So I have a little give room and I can trim it out with a, um, a two by, I think it'll be a two by six or two by eight once it's finished, something like that. Whatever it is, I can trim it to size. But uh, I think I'm gonna get this poured. I got enough sunlight, so. I'm gonna get these three poured and then I'm done doing concrete up here. Uh, then all the rest of the concrete's just on the cages and stuff back there. So it'll be good to get the tools pulled back away from here. Why not? And the sun's not on me. <laughs> so I'm gonna get that done. All right guys, it is the next morning and the concrete is, well, is dry. So we can pull these forms off all three sections are dry. Um, if I was a professional concrete finisher, I would have worked that with the trowel and got that smooth as can be, but I'm just tap conning a, a two by six on top of that and, uh, and framing out that wall section. Obviously I have to peel some back up there. So um, we're gonna have to peel back quite a bit to tie that in and do our door openings. But really, if I can get this return wall section and that return wall section done, then I can, uh, well actually there needs to be a, uh, I think a six by six at the end of that up to, uh, to tie into a header for the, for the big door. Um, then I can get my tools and Jeep and stuff in there. Like that's as far as we need to go. Just the walls, just stop the rain from infiltrating that whole area. Um, but before we pull those forms off, let's go feed the fish. You guys haven't seen them in a while. Um, they seem to be doing good. I think I mentioned that uh, we were, we had a lot more turtles in the pond. The, uh, the water level has gone down a bit. If you guys remember, it was by that drain. So we're about two and a half feet lower than that. I could see the waves in the water right now that the fish are when I walk out on the dock in the morning, they just go crazy. Um, they're getting so used to the feeding. That's their favorite spot to be fed over there for some reason. And I just do the three handfuls a day and they, uh, there are some of the friendlier turtles that usually find their way right over here and join in on this. But we definitely have a lot of vegetation in the water. We do need to, uh, on my list of things, pull the permit and get those uh, grass carp in here to help control the vegetation in this pond or this lake, whatever we want to call it. Um, but it, uh, it's pretty. I mean, it's not weeds out there. 
but you can see I don't know if you guys could see down in the water but there are weeds down on the bottom I have a feeling that this these are just sections that flowed up from the bottom and really the whole bottom has vegetation um, maybe that's habitat you know maybe that's good for all the fish it gives the little ones a place to hide um, I don't want it all gone so I really need to talk to somebody before I pull the permit and order the carp I want the right number that will help control the overabundance of vegetation but I do want vegetation in here all right they're slowing down that's they always do this they move their food on top of the mats and then they slowly make little holes and start feeding on it through the weed mats I guess it gives them something to do what else do they have to do all day swim around <laughs> all right so let's get these forms pulled off should be pretty cool maybe I'll put you guys in a time lapse and show you what it looks like when it's done I know I said time lapse but it might make more sense to do one in real time and then just show you the other ones finished Felt good to put all the concrete stuff away. Or not away, but in the back of the property away from this. Since this project, at least the concrete portion of it, is done. Onto my heart clay. I don't know where my hammer is. Yeah, there's my hammer. All right, so that's the wall section with that removed. Um, and again, when we put our plywood up after framing the walls the plywood will come down an inch and a half onto that concrete as a little overlap um, you know at the other house i actually was really smart and i did a section of pressure treated there and then went to regular plywood to again stop insects from going into it i wonder if i do, shouldn't do something smart like that here or even pressure treated plywood and do a one foot strip. You know what, I'm gonna measure and see what is the smartest to go around the bottom and do pressure treated along the bottom again. Anything to stop insects and, uh, and any rot from happening when you're building something out of wood. Um, all right, I'm gonna peel these other two off and show you the finished product. Okay, that's it with the forms all off. There's that inch and a half mark. If I put a six by six on the end here, well, a two by six down flat Capcom to this, and then a large six by six upright that's gonna support the door header going across that doorway. And that'll probably be two, two by 12s with three quarter inch plywood sandwiched between them. Then I will have this inch and a half that I can actually trim out with a two by six to mount the door to that's lagged into that two by six. That'll be good and strong 
and it'll give me a little play if I have to shave something to fit that door properly. So I had that three inches of play. I have an inch and a half on this side, this side. So that's all done. I, I cannot tell you how good it will feel to have this shop dried in and actually be a functioning shop again and organize. Uh, Adam has another one of those cabinet units for me that I can hang on the wall like start getting this garbage off the floor and onto shelving and actually be organized. I don't even think you saw my other house organized, but I'm a, usually a very, I like everything in its place. And this drives me crazy. So I cannot wait to get this done. I'm gonna get started on this wall and try and get all of these off the floor because we're filming another video at the same time, getting that Jeep in here and getting started on that. All right, guys, um, I'm not sure exactly where I left off on this project. I believe that Tom and I are missing uh, uh, two days of footage some, somehow or another. Um, but this is, I know at some point, I think I was just starting to frame this wall, but I've got this wall all framed out all the way to the corner and I'm returning on the back wall. And this very next stud is where it starts taking that pitch up there. So I've got to use a straight edge from here all the way to there and create a straight line. And then also from this edge there and there and create a line and then I can peel that back accordingly. And then I have to put a two by four so I have something to screw to. Oh, I'm sorry, not a two by four, a two by six, forgot what size lumber I'm using up there. Um, and, and I believe there, so I, I need a place to, uh, to nail it to or screw it to. So um, I need to get those pieces of lumber up there and then I can finish this return. Now, because this lumber is here, we will go through this entire stack. So just to get it off the floor, I don't need material sitting on the floor and it, it getting crooked because that's exactly what will happen. Oh, let me show you the rest of the stuff. Um, I think I decided that I'm just gonna move this door since this area will be locked up. I'm just gonna move that door over here. So I have my opening already set. Um, and I have my pressure treated two by sixes tap conned all through here. And I don't know if I showed you guys this or not, but I have my front openings totally done with the pressure treated on it for my garage doors. So I'll have a 12 by 12 garage door here and there. Uh, we'll get to doing the headers and everything for that in another video showing how we tie all that in there. Um, that, that'll be a another video right now I think all we need to do is if I got these two walls done and stop the rain from coming in at least so I would have that corner and that wall section that I know is dry um, and even if I got gosh this wall I would know that at least in the middle of this wall section I could do a shelving unit maybe that last 10 feet of it and, and that gets everything off the floor. That's, that's, that's what I can't stand, is, is everything sitting on the floor in here. Uh, this is driving me crazy, <laughs> stuff everywhere. It, it really, everything is a mess right now. Um, like, uh, like I said, I'm always filming multiple videos at a time. Uh, I, am, I just finished the demo with the other property. I have the buckets of white hallway rock um, I have a mountain of that material at the other house that as I finish the plumbing in the hallway that needs to and I put a weed blocking liner down then this needs to hold it down obviously I'm gonna need more because the other house had a 50 foot by 36 inch wide hallway we have a 48 inch wide hallway here so we're gonna need more rock anyway but why throw it out I mean it takes a little work to get it up I've got it all up at the other property um, might as well use it and uh this is the rest of the posts so so everything is done at the other house it's all 
graded down, smoothed, um, ready for sod or seed. I don't know what we're gonna decide to do there. Um, but it's all it's all here. Um, I uh, I think when I figure this out, I may put you guys on time lapse so you guys can see how I straight edge that and uh, solve that little tricky corner. Obviously, all of this is easy. Um, that material up there is three eighths, and the plywood I'm putting on this wall is half inch. And technically when I tar paper this, I should tar paper all of that. Um, I may try to get away with not doing all of that right now um, and just stop the rain. Obviously water's gonna get behind that tar paper and find its way to my wall um, if I don't. Uh, but when I do the hardy board, I could just, I'm gonna do that hardy board lap siding could go right over that other hardy board as long as I know where the studs are, which I can see the nails if I if I pay attention and make my straight lines. Um, I think if I got a small amount of material, I could knock out that wall first without having to waste the tar paper up there and uh, and uh, knock out that wall. Um, oh shoot. I know, we'll figure that when we get to it. Yeah, more ideas are popping in my head as I'm talking. Let's, uh, let, let's get this corner done. Did I say time lapse? I meant time warp. It's done. <laughs> I, I started setting it up and I realized that where I could set the camera had a horrible angle, but the, the corner of the wall is all done. It's all tied in good. Um, so we'll sneak through the wall. And where I screw the plywood in, I'll make sure that it's a solid piece there and I have something to screw in up top there. I, if this was an exterior wall and it was exposed, I would want something to screw to up top. But remember, this roof is getting extended all the way out here and there's gonna be a truss laid across all this for additional strength. And then the roof is gonna seal this up so this will all be under cover still. This slab will continue straight across here all the way out there and I am extending this roof out. This will be my woodworking and fiberglass area where I sand and then all the dust is controlled in this area and will not get into my shop and will not get into my bar area. So that's done. After lunch, again, I still have those boards I will start framing out this doorway here and uh, I will show you guys that. So I now have the doorway that I said I was gonna frame out guys on this wall. I haven't done anything else over there because I'm not even putting plywood on this yet. I was just using the rest of the lumber up that I had purchased. This door will get transferred over to that opening. So we'll be able to walk through and then breeze over to that other section. And the reason why we need that to breeze over is this is getting closed off. My shop will be its own entity that can be locked and secured and clean of all the dust and debris of the woodworking section on the other side of this wall. Uh, so the first section that I'm gonna hang plywood on is this section right here, because I've already moved my toolboxes over to the house. And then I can finally hang this cabinet onto that plywood wall above this piece here for all of my, you know, spray lubricants and things like that and tape and things like that can fit in that cabinet there. Um, but it's all framed out and I've already cheated and I'll show you what I do at the bottom of the wall. I've got some scaffolding already here to, uh, I've got a, my, my buddy Brandon's coming over tomorrow and he's gonna help me hang the upper sheets but what we're gonna try and get done today is that one partition that I showed you where the toolboxes go, this return wall, and once it's done, also tar papered. That inside there does not need to be, but this will be tar papered over. Um, I will have to tape that up there and then just watch it because as soon as the money or time allows, this will get trimmed out, 
this roof will get extended out. And once I figure where that is, then it'll be hardy board lap siding, just like you guys can see it on that wall. I don't know where you can see it better. You know, if you guys know lap siding, um, this whole thing will get lap siding and it will get um, painted that dark intergalactic gray like my shop was at the other house. But, uh, and I will go as high as I can on this wall with bring, um, today. And then tomorrow we're gonna go all the way up and have it all tar papered and dried in. Um, now what I did at the beginning of this wall, cause why would you hang a one foot strip of plywood? This is pressure treated or ground contact plywood. It's not contacting the ground because we built this stem wall. If we didn't build this concrete stem wall, our uh, two by six would have been top conned onto this slab and the rainwater would always touch it. It would also touch the bottom plywood whenever it rained and it would be able to absorb that water. By putting the concrete there, we elevated it and we have our wood further away from, from the water. And, you know, termites are vicious creatures. They will do a mud, they'll find their way through this crack, create a mud tunnel, and then find the white pine. But what we did is we just give that, gave them pressure treated wood that they don't want, pressure treated wood that they don't want. And this is white pine. They would have to go past the wood that is soaked with chemical to get to the wood that doesn't have chemical, which they will do, but they're less likely to do. So uh, this wall I did two foot and only for the reason that it created less waste by doing a two foot piece of, of wood. Otherwise I would have only done a one foot strip along the bottom here. Um, you, you don't typically so, see builders even doing that. They use a higher quality plywood that has a little higher glue content, but still it's, it's not termite deterrent. It's not, uh, I think this is better. Um, you'll see once we start tar papering it over and stuff like that, it, it'll work. And uh, again, we're not touching the front side yet, um, but at least we'll have a dry corner for shelving, our toolboxes, and I need to then finish this other wall before I move my surf skis or my race kayaks, which will hang from the ceiling in the middle of this shop. Um, I think I'm moving three over, but I fluctuate between three and <laughs> I think I've been up to like 11 of them at one point, but that was a bit obsessive. Um, all right, well, I think I'll time lapse you guys when I start hanging this plywood so you can see the process. All right, guys, so I was gonna go straight into the time lapse, but I felt like these steps needed some explanation. So when I installed these two by fours, I made them level. I did not pour this slab and I can't guarantee that it's level. In fact, it shouldn't be level. It actually should slope where it drains. This garage should slope slightly to the forward to drain. So obviously your material has to run off to some degree. So I put this screw in this bottom corner first and then I took, I lifted up this ply, plywood because it's hinging on that one screw over there. So I lifted it up and I set a pry bar underneath it. Then I put a level on the top of it. And by moving my foot on the, on the pry bar, I was able to lift the plywood up until I had perfect level on my level. And then I put the first screw in. So you can see we've ran off on the bottom by I'd say seven eighths of an inch in eight feet. So that slab has a good slope for any water on it for it to drain out. It'll still grab that two by four um, by the end. So we, we have no issues there or anything like that. So the next thing I did after I had that one, I do all the easy screws, all the ones that are centered up top, right? And then obviously the ones on the wall, what I do. Now on the exterior wall, we're gonna do screws 12 inches on center. 
but for this interior wall, if it was drywall, I think we would go to like eight to 10 inches, but this is more, we're just sealing it up. It's, I'm doing 16 on center. I, I'm not killing a whole bunch of hardware on this wall. So I just hang my tape measure on that, 16, 32. So now I have screws 16 on center. Now for this, there is no line there. So how do you know, you can guess where the stud's gonna be on your plywood and just guess and put screws in, but you could miss. Your eyes will always play tricks on you. So I just take six foot level, make it even or slightly over on the screw up top, get it level, well, I like it. And then I draw a line down that level all the way down. So once the black line is there, the pencil line, only takes a second. You go over five times, you've done the whole sheet. And all I do is I hang my tape measure right there, hanging on my sheet, put my screw in at six and 16 and 32, go to the next one, 16 and 32, once it starts wobbling around and finish up my sheet. And then along the bottom, I just put a screw. Again, there's no guessing where they're at. Uh, every every 12 inches, I put a screw along the bottom. So now this, this is very strong. This wall is gonna be super strong. Plywood is very strong at holding a wall this way and that way. Um, it has no flex, no give. Um, so the, the next sheet we'll do here, and then we'll do a full sheet over this way, I think it ends up, well, actually, I don't know where it ends up because I think we have to do a full sheet from this over. So I think we have to do a full sheet and a scab and then another piece. But by staggering it like bricks, you make the wall even stronger yet. Um, that doesn't, it's not as important on this wall as it will be on something that's actually gonna take the full wind of a hurricane it is more important out there. But before I put you guys in time lapse, I just wanted you to see, I mean, screwing up plywood just seems like screwing up plywood, but there is a right way and a wrong way. And, and really the right way would be every eight to 10 inches on that sheet of plywood, a fastener. If I was using a nail, a nail gun, man, you would just pop, 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 put one every, every eight inches on that sheet of plywood and it would be great, but I feel like screws are stronger than nails. There are ring shank nails that are slightly ribbed, but it's still, it's still, those ribs have to go through that product and then grab a screw to me is still stronger. So um, it, it'll just take longer, but how much longer? Uh, a minute, two minutes every sheet for it to be stronger, I'll do that. Um, all right. So I'm gonna put you on time lapse and we're gonna finish up this wall and then roll my toolboxes into place and then immediately start on that outside wall. All right, the good old GoPro overheated on us, but we've got the wall done. We've got, we just rolled uh, the toolbox into place. Obviously we still need to do that outside wall or this could still get wet in the rain. And I have to pull electrical or at least a power strip over here for it because the batteries to charge all my cordless tools sit up in there and they need electrical. But uh, we have this uh, cabinet. Adam Greiner says he has another one identical to this. That one I could put into my garage for my household paints. But we want to hang that up here. And I watch some people, not all people, but some people struggle hanging cabinetry. Um, it's easy if, again, you just use a simple trick. Uh, I always tile in, in my kitchens all the way to my cabinets. In fact, I, I'll, I'll tile the entire wall 
I'll have to show you, maybe I'll add a picture to this video right here, remind me, Tom, of my other kitchen. Um, but when I hang a cabinet, I will mount at the height I want, I'll go ahead and mount wood onto the wall to support my cabinetry level and I'll have everything marked up and I can just pick up my cabinets by myself, set them onto that piece of wood and screw, already know where my studs are gonna be and put my screws in quickly because, and then once I remove that wood from the wall, I'll have just some small holes either the patch and touch up paint or it would get covered up by whatever backsplash tile you're doing. Um, in this case, it doesn't matter. It's a wooden shop wall. We may paint it later. Um, my last shop was painted inside. Um, I think it stays a lot cleaner when, when you do that. But I mean, right now we're just drying in the shop. So um, it just doesn't matter. So what I'm gonna do is I've already figured the center distance from this tool chest to over here. I marked my center. That other cabinet is 64 inches wide. So 32 over, I have a mark. 32 over from center, I have a mark. And then I played with the tape measure, deciding on the height I want it. This is the height that I settled at. So now I'll just take this two by four, put it right there, level it, and put three screws into it and put it against the wall. Then we can pick this whole big cabinet up where that two by four is holding the entire weight of that cabinet. And then I can just stand on a ladder and screw the sucker in. Uh, and this is all gonna get stuff off my floor. Uh, I'm gonna breathe so much better when this shop is organized. And now showing the two by four just mounted to the wall with the three screws. It's perfectly level. And uh, we're just gonna pick the cabinet up and screw the sucker on. All right guys, it's the end of the day. I'm exhausted. Cabinets hung, toolboxes are back in that area. I did not finish that return wall. I'll uh, let's walk around. But I did get one more row of plywood done here. And remember the this started with two foot of pressure treated because that equals just shy of one sheet to finish. And instead of fighting that sheet of plywood by myself, standing on a ladder, trying to screw it, I'll just wait for Brandon tomorrow because why hurt myself trying to do something when the help's gonna be here the next day. So I'm calling it a day. I'm gonna go get a steak dinner. What are you gonna get? Some trimmings? I'll save him something. But uh, that's it for today. Um, tomorrow, this should be done. All right, it's the next morning and my good friend Brandon is here with me. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> and Brandon and I have been friends since before we were born. Our parents were friends. So uh, we grew up fishing together, diving, snorkeling, uh, racing go-karts, you name it. Uh, we did it together growing up. Well, not you name it. I, don't get weird, guys. Um, everything that normal boys do. Um, and so he's gonna help me get the rest of this plywood up and get it dried in with tar paper on it. And uh, I showed you guys where I got last night. And uh, there's just one more row of plywood to do here and uh probably a little small insert up on that corner but uh we're gonna get this guy cut and get these sheets in and i'll show you when this is done i believe we will time lapse out here so you guys could see the process all right how's this for time lapse if you guys look real watch real closely you'll see it all get done how is that i uh I never set the camera up. We just started talking and started working. We got all the plywood sheets up on this wall. And, uh, and we got all this done here. And uh, we're going to go get some lunch in us. Uh, Brandon's kids are running around here too. 
I think his uh, his daughter Delaney was on the dock fishing. She's been fishing most of the time we've been working. And uh, his son uh, Dawson has been riding around with Pete on the golf cart. But uh, we're going to go get some lunch and then we're going to get the tar paper on this thing. And, uh, and it's going to be dried in. Very exciting. And I can't thank Brandon enough. I'll thank him again. All right, guys, it's the, uh, the next morning. Uh, I'm sorry I did such a hor horrible job with time lapses. Uh, they never happened <laughs> at all. I just, there's some projects where you feel like you have some time to pick up the camera and do stuff. But when someone else comes over to help me, I feel like I'm on their clock and we just got to it. Um, I still have tools out everywhere, but now there's no light peeking through because there's all the tar paper on the other side. Now I can build some shelving inside there. Actually, I have some shelving to take apart at the other house, but uh, she's all dried in. I just finished up all the, uh, the nails and uh, washers. Um, we worked until we couldn't even see the nails that we were driving in last night and uh, obviously we could have pulled out lights but the mosquitoes had already found us so if we just pulled lights out here uh, we would have had even more mosquitoes on us so um, I know this looks weird the way I'm wrapping this corner that's already a hardy board um, once I finish doing this other roof and do the hardy uh, board lap siding and trim I'm gonna do lap siding right over all that existing hardy board um, even though it stinks to, uh, to cover up that material I want it all to look consistent and I want this shop to look really nice and be something that I can be proud of so you know I got all my corners tied in good enough um, I could have went with an easier to handle uh, synthetic wrap or something like that but because I needed it to weather um, this 30 pound felt was a stronger product it's not going to tear with the wind and stuff like that because it needs to sit this way for a couple months before the money's there and time to, to really finish the shop but for now uh that's the end of this video we've started the shop and uh i think we have a good start on it and uh that's it i'm gonna go shop for a washing machine today the washing machine is stretching all the necks out on my shirts um, it's about as old as I am that's in the garage here so I need to do that today while they have some sales all right guys until next time thanks for watching everyone please don't forget to like comment share subscribe and ring the notification bell see you soon